Uh, we won, huh? <laughs> um, well, first, first things first. I think I think it, uh, my perception was that it was a great game. Um, and uh, you know, you know, if you ever have a great game, you need two really good teams to make that happen. I think you have to give um, UVA a ton of credit and, and congratulations to them on the, um, an amazing season. Um, they were uh, an unbelievably talented, um, unbelievably hard uh, team to deal with, and uh, you know, it, it, it felt a little bit like a war of attrition by the end. I think guys were falling over with cramps, and um, you know, you're just trying to you're, you're trying to um, uh, outlast them by the end, uh, and uh, you know that's the the difficulty when you're playing Friday Sunday. It's just it's it's really tough to to, to push through. And um, but uh, you know I think uh, as 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 all year uh, the, the team has shown a ton of uh, grit and resilience. I think going down early um, is always hard in the final because you're not sure that might be the only goal. Um, we live we lived through that in 2012. With one goal just did it and. Um, but um, you know, I, I, I think this team always feels like they can score, and, 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 and as per uh, our um, uh, our tendencies, it's so many so many different teams to show up and, and find ways to, to get results. So uh, Paul's goal was was obviously um, uh, an indicator, maybe of how the game was going to go. It's just goals are, goals are going to go when you get chances, uh, and then and then Daniel Daniel uh, getting the goal here in hometown and. Um, uh, first goal of his career, and, you know, it's, it's just storybook stuff. Um, and then, uh, you know, the, the third goal from from uh, Achara and, and Dodson, I th you thought was worthy of winning the, the national championship, and and credit to, to UVA. I mean, they're a championship caliber side. That's what that's what championship teams do is they fight. And um, and uh, and the equalizing goal was a was a kick to the teeth for us. But I think the um, the, the mental resolve of this team, I think, showed itself really well, and they, they, they held through to, to find a way. Th and, um, um, and uh, you know, we, the penalty kicks, um, I think we had four, three or four of our, our first maybe seven or eight kickers were injured or couldn't go. And, um, you know, putting some different guys into, into that pressure type of a situation and having them step up and hit their penalties well, I think, was um, – was, 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 um, was a really good uh, uh, it's a really good feeling to see the guys come through and, and, and execute that and and obviously uh, uh, find a way through the penalties so we're ecstatic and, and uh, I, you know personally I'm I'm overjoyed for uh, for the, for the players I'm overjoyed for um, our our program I'm overjoyed for uh, our university and um, you know uh, Lee Reed our athletic director is, is um, uh, uh, as good as it gets, and, and I'm, I'm I'm so happy for him uh, that we've we've won the we've won the thing. Uh, and uh, President uh, Dejoya is a, uh, he he came down to watch the game. He's an unbelievable supporter of our program, and um, you know just uh, to 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 be able to have all the support and, uh, of these people validated with the with the win was was special. Tomas, all the kickers were perfect up until uh, the, the end. There, take us through that. What you, what tendencies maybe you saw, or um, just just describe it. Uh, so, I I don't know. Really, I feel like the last uh, PK shootout that we went through, uh, the one against Butler, I relied a lot on the scout, and this time around, I I just stuck to my instinct, and that's obviously like something that I learned. <laughs> it ended up working out. Uh, but I feel like I should have saved at least one of the other ones. Uh, I was kind of upset that I didn't, but I didn't. I didn't dwell on it really. I just knew every every shot that I was like had a new possibility of saving it. And then the last guy stepped up, and he kind of did like a straight walk back, and then went to the side. And for some reason, something in my head thought, go to the opposite side, <laughs> or like usually when someone does that, they go uh, to my left. And for some reason, I just thought, I think he's gonna go right. And then I just dove right and saved it. So. Questions for Daniel. Uh, first, uh, take us through Virginia's first goal, uh, and then take us through your goal that you scored later on. So uh, Virginia's goal was, I think they, it, like, there was a lot of confusion. 
there was balls bouncing around and it just ended up at the top of the box and it just had a crack and I think it deflected off of Sean Zawadzki and then it deflected, I stuck a leg out to try and kind of block it and then deflected off of that, off of my left foot and then Tomas was already diving to his right and he just couldn't make it back on time. And then on my goal, um, the ball was played in, I saw Rio going up for it and I made the run towards him because I, I just had a feeling it was going to land there and it just landed there and I was like, oh shoot, I guess I'll have to shoot this and it just went in. <laughs> Dylan, uh, Georgetown's been very good for many years. Uh, you've been fighting to join that, that elite club. Um, what, uh, what does this feel like now to get there and be part of that, part of that group? Yeah, um, you know, it starts back to when the first Georgetown men's soccer team um, you know, even started. We had so many alumni out there today. Um, you know, they wanted to rush onto the field as soon as Tomas saved that last PK. Um, and those 2012 guys, you know, they couldn't have been more happier for us. You know, this win is not only for us, but just the rest of Georgetown, you know, Georgetown men's soccer and just the whole university. And, and, and I just have to tell a quick, a quick anecdote about uh, Dylan. So his older brother played for us on the other side. He mirrored over uh, Jimmy. Um, and Jimmy was a senior on that 2012 team. Um, that lost in, uh, in the final to Indiana. And, and when uh, Dylan committed to come to play at Georgetown, he, he, he started the phone call. He said, Coach, I, I just want to finish the job my brother started, and I'm going to come to Georgetown. We're going to win a national championship. And he almost ran out of time, so I'm glad he figured it out for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. True story. Dylan, can, can you talk about uh, this, this team and, and what was special about it? I mean, why are you guys sitting up here as national champions? Um, going off the whole year, I think our depth. You know, looking at the sheet, we used eight subs. Uh, Virginia only used three. Um, we, we have so many talented players on our team, you know, from 1 to 28. Any one of those guys could step on the field and make an impact. Um, you know, obviously having the game earlier in the semifinal, Having those two extra hours, you know, we, we tried to use to our advantage as much as we can. Um, you saw everyone at, towards the end was just cramping up. You know, I tried. Um, I thought I was done after 90, but managed to go one more overtime. Um, yeah, again, the depth, uh, just a special group of guys, um, and, and I couldn't be more happier. Uh, Daniel. Can you even dream of a night like this in your hometown to come up big in a national championship game? To be honest, no. Um, Rio and I were talking about like talking about me scoring a goal this season like a few weeks back. We were talking about how because I was always missing headers during like, the regular season, and then Rio was like, "Daniel, you're gonna you're gonna score in a big moment," and this was the moment that I scored in. Dylan, uh, we've heard a lot about how deep this team is. As someone who's a senior, uh, how would you speak to the job that your head coach has done with this program? Unbelievable. You know, I couldn't be more happy for him. You know, he, it just how badly he wanted this one. You know, it was, it was just the whole moment was special. Um, you know, I hugged him after, told him I finished the job um, to finish that anecdote. Um, and he, he trusted everyone this whole year. Um, I think it was one game he, he didn't decide to go to the bench and then realized, you know, that's just not our DNA. Um, so using as much players and using our depth, you know, it really came, came out clutch today. You've got two freshmen. You've got two freshmen to your left. And now to climb the mountain and get that national championship, what can this do for this program going forward? Yeah, I think they got a huge amount of potential. You know, I'll say sorry for yelling at them the whole year. Now that we're national champs, I feel bad being next to Wu. I gave him a, a earful every game. Um, but hopefully he could take those lessons uh, when I leave um, and, and share it to the rest of the team. Any more questions for our student-athletes? Okay, guys, congratulations. Coach Washington. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Questions for Coach? Sure, sure, Coach. Uh, uh, Dylan mentioned the, the depth. Um, what would you say is the reason you guys are sitting up here as champions right now? 
Yeah, I mean, that's been the storyline for us all year. Um, and, you know, this is, this is um, the, the, the number, of, the number of, of players we use today is we've been doing it from, from day one of the, of, of the season. And um, it's, it's been a remarkable run because um, we haven't necessarily needed to rely on certain core of group of players. You, you, we haven't needed two players or three players to be the guys to win you games all year. And I think um, this weekend's a really good example. Um, uh, Jacob Montes has been maybe the reason why we got here to the, to the College Cup with his performance in the first three games. And, um, uh, and you know, his, his role was much more diminished in terms of sort of end product and getting goals and assists. It wasn't, wasn't as involved um, as, as, uh, as he had been, and, and other people did it. And, uh, um, you know, you, you just, it, 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 as a coach, it's, it's, um, it's gratifying when you, when you see players take chances that they're given and, and do well with it. And I think that that's been something that we've um, w has has resonated with us through the year. Uh, and you think back to to some of our performances early in the year that really sort of laid the foundation for that. I, to be honest, I didn't I didn't start the se the preseason thinking we're going to use eighteen nineteen players all year. Um, I, I liked our guys. I liked the group we had. I, I thought we had a lot of competition. Uh, in the team when you st step out for preseason, but you know you go into the season thinking we'll figure out who are the core group. Who's that core group of of thirteen, fourteen, fifteen guys? You know when when you're in a in a game that's um, uh, a must win scenario. Who, who's that core group of guys? And and the core group for us literally just became eighteen, nineteen guys. And um, it's not something I've ever experienced in my coaching uh, career to have that kind of true depth. Um, that you, you you inherently trust, and so we're we're sitting there making decisions based on uh, style of player, what what strengths are for guys, who's going to go on maybe in these moments. The game's going to open up, so maybe Jack Beer's the right guy at that time, or or it's going to be a little bit of a of a of a mud fest. So Foster McCune's going to be the one to run around and, and and figure it out, or or whatever it is. And and um, you know we 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 played our, the game against UCLA. We went down one nothing, and our reserves came on and injected that game with life and, and pop and and um, the little Zach Riviere scores a hat trick. Um, uh, our, the Big East final. You know we're playing, we're struggling. Uh, our, our starting group was having a hard time. Providence was running the game, and uh, you know the second half we started you know maybe four or five different guys in our starting group, and that group ran over Providence. And and you know so. A lot of it is, 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 you know, the faith that I put into those players was, was, um, was uh, um, fundamentally realized almost every time um, they had the opportunity. Brian, you've been, uh, you've been knocking at the door locally and nationally um, for a few years. You got close a few years about. Now you're there. What's, uh, what's the level of... of Big picture of the satisfaction of, of winning this thing. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I mean, the, the winning moment's a funny one because it doesn't really hit you. I and mean, people are running around you, so you're like, I, we just won, I think, right? It's, uh, um, you know, it doesn't, it, it's, it's, you know, it, it, it's a hard one because you, when you prepare for a, a final, you have to mentally prepare for winning and losing. And, um, you know, when you when you spend the time preparing yourself for, well, what if we don't do it? You know, how are you going to handle the team? How are you going to handle um, those moments? You, you, you really, you actually, that's where you fi you figure out sort of what it really means to coach, right? Because that's that's the that the core essence is that when the winning and losing is removed, and um, well, why do you do these things? Um, but you know, getting getting the national championship is is a dream for for every program. And, um, you know, to do it um, against uh, a, a, an area rival of UVA's pedigree and their quality um, in, in a season where they've had um, one of the more remarkable seasons they've probably had, you know, from start to finish. Um, you know, it's, if, if you're gonna, if you're gonna win, the, win the whole thing, it, it, it's wonderful to, to go through the, what we feel like we just, we won the Pac-12 in this thing, we feel like we won the ACC in this thing, and it's like, um, I, I think a lot of it, to be honest with you, is is validation for, um, you know, the, the teams out there that are trying to figure out how do you how do you do it, how do you break in, and and you don't need to be in a Power Five conference to do it. Um, 
but you need you need you need uh, a support structure that believes you can do it. And um, you know, so for me, I, I'm just I, I I always go back to how uh, happy I am for the for the people who've believed in us um, over the years. And um, you know, and again, I, I go back to. Uh, Lee Reed, when you know he first took over, I think it was tw I think it was 2010. Um, he came into 2009, 2009 or 10. I think it was 2010. He came in. Um, uh, I had um, uh, another school that was sort of talking to me, and we we has a pro we haven't done anything at that time. 2010, we haven't even gone to the playoffs yet. So I I had been at Georgetown for about four years, and and he didn't know me at, at, from anything other than just a coach you know, in, in the department. Um, and he, and he came in and said, no, I, I want you here. And, and I think we can win here. What do we need to do here? Um, and, and that conversation was one where you realize you have someone who's, who, who sees the same vision that you have. And, you know, when you get that kind of support from, from your athletic director and you get, you get the support you get from the university. And then, and then to be, to be honest, the big East is, is it, it's validation for our league, you know? I mean, we're we we have a a conference that I think, you know, in my opinion, got a little um, uh, uh, disrespected in this in the selection with with where we were from the RPI base. All four teams that made it um, had RPIs and seedings that were lower than those RPIs, one way or the other. And you know, I think this is this this is just validation of. Um, you know what what the league can be and uh, what what our, you know our university can be. And I, 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 you can't take it away, so we have that forever now, which is nice. Um, but uh, you know now now you have an expectation that you have to manage, and that's that's what that's what it's about. Coach, you said after Friday's win that you you for the most part weren't able to play the style of play that you wanted to because of the conditions or whatnot. What were you able to do, if anything, tonight that you weren't able to do on Friday? But uh, totally different game. So Friday, Friday the guys actually did exceptionally well given the circumstances. Um, today, I, I thought um, it, it it felt like a game unlike any we've played all year because of Virginia. Uh, Virginia makes it incredibly hard to press. We like to press. We like to to dictate. Uh, we like to be on the ball. And for long stretches of that game, we were defending, trying to figure out how. Um, to to prevent uh, you know DK from from getting time and space and and um, you know Joe Bell is an exceptional player that's a challenge they they as a back four they space really well so they're a tactical a conundrum for us it, it's we're we're I think we fancy ourselves as a good match against them when we have the ball um, but without the ball they were very very difficult to solve uh, because of the pieces they have. And so, to be fair, today didn't feel like a game like anything we've played. I didn't feel like we ever had a real great grip of it. It was, it, it, it was um, how good are we at managing transition? How good are we managing set pieces? And it wasn't, it wasn't a whole lot of us controlling the, the, the tempo and, and having a lot of the ball and connecting a ton of passes. And I think you have to give a ton of credit to Virginia. Any more questions for Coach? Yeah, so coach, in the uh, 85th minute there, when DK scores down here, um, it seems sort of like momentum kind of changed a little bit again, back in Virginia's favor. Um, but you know, obviously the defense held strong and you know went to PKs. Was there a message you kind of gave to your team before that first um, extra time period there that kind of I don't know settled them down some? Um, they were in a pretty good mental place, to be fair. Um, I think they they. They uh, were obviously disappointed not to be able to, to hang on to the lead, um, um, but you know it, it, a lot of it is is just what we talk about with trusting trusting your your your, your teammates, um, outworking them you know at that stage and and then trying to what we what we like to call trying to make it a soccer game, which is like get a hold of the ball, keep the ball, pass the ball, find gaps because they were tired too. I mean Virginia was awfully tired and. Um, it was a real gut check for both teams. I mean, that was a that was an unbelievable competition for for two groups really wanting to win that thing. And um, you know, we we were we were really wanting our guys to get a much better grip of of possession um, to try to dictate um, where the game was being played. And it, you know, it didn't work all that well, to be honest. <laughs> um, 
uh, because there's only a few a few little moments. But you know, when you get to overtime in that game, it was you know we had we had uh, set pieces for both teams that that you know I I thought our attacking set pieces today were incredibly poor, um, and, which is an anomaly. For, we're usually you know take a lot of pride in being good at that, and and I felt very nervous on every single one of theirs, which maybe is natural, um, but. Um, you know, but you have these little moments. It's just like when when turnovers happen, the game felt wide open in, in certain in certain parts, and and uh, um, we just wanted the guys to relax and and understand possession was was hugely important. And when you have your transition moments, just make sure you score so we can end it, so we don't have to run backwards again. But um, you know, it, it, over time in, in this setting, it's just too short. You know, two ten minute periods can can go by very very quickly too. So.